right, so we're back in control of Alex. Now, I did mention that I want to talk a little bit more about Michael, and that supposedly he was supposed to commit suicide. Now, that's only something I had heard about. I don't think I ever read it from an official source or anything. And it ended up not being used in the game, so... You know, there, there may not even be any validity to that. It might just be someone's idea of what would have been a good ending for that story. It very well could have been something that was talked about, you know, during production of the game, but in the end wasn't used for any number of reasons. Now, there is... There's kind of a silly little thing that I would like to imagine. And I don't know if we're quite ready to have it happen yet. Oh, doorbell. So somebody came to the door, left a package, and ran off. What's in the package? What's in the box? A package wrapped in brown paper has been left inside the door. Okay, I'm going to cast the magical fountain, magical pool for you. That wasn't it, that was the, the shield. That's alright. Shield is useful. So we want to check the brown paper parcel. A parcel wrapped in plain brown paper is not addressed to anyone and appears to have been wrapped in a hurry. There might be something inside. Should Alex open it? Acquire the essence of Uliath and the enchanted Gladius. So now that she has this enchanted Gladius, she never needs to cast enchantments on her sword ever again because she can use this. Also, we found the essence of Uliath. The essence of Uliath, its veil, shifts from plane to plane, reality to reality never really existing, but never really not. Now, personally, I would like to believe that that was Michael. That was Michael who ran up to the door, rang the doorbell, and left the package. That's probably not the case. It's pretty much guaranteed that that's not the case. But for reasons that will become a little more apparent later, I, I want to at least believe that he's alive somewhere. But, if that was true, and even what he said about the Guardians coming after him, chances are he didn't last the night. And we don't know when that took place, either. Did that take place the night Edward was murdered? Did that play take place some months or weeks or years beforehand? Because remember, what's happening to Alex right now is happening two weeks after her grandfather was murdered. I wasn't going to try to cast... There we go. There. Now we're shielded, we have a permanently enchanted Gladius, and Mantarok is slowly refilling our health, our magic, and our sanity. Okay, now it's time to adjust the mirrors like we were doing in Michael's chapter. Come on. There we go. And the pathway to Enga has opened. And I think the handle is gone. Yep. What I am going to do is cast low-level enchant items. So we can get our revolver and our shotgun higher on our inventory list.
the lid removed, some kind of well-like entrance is revealed. A ladder leads down into the murky darkness. Was this Edward's route into the Guardian City? Should Alex climb down the ladder? Of course she should. And over here is the ladder that Maximilian and her grandfather had used earlier. Alex cannot climb this ladder because the shaft above has been sealed, perhaps by Maximilian Roybus all those years ago. What we are going to do is save. Because now we are playing Alex's chapter, and this is the last one of the game. As the tome had suggested by Edward's and Maximilian's words, the city exists, and is far more incredible than Alex had thought. Here are the ruins of Enga, the corpse city, parasited by the Guardians of Zelototh. Nine great towers dwarf the surrounding buildings. It would appear these towers serve as some kind of focusing array, channeling great tides of energy into the city itself. Now, poor Alex is going to have to go through a lot of the same crap her grandfather did. Except it's actually going to be a little more difficult. And that's why it's going to be a little more difficult. The floor is now covered with a damage field. recast the shield because here at the very end we need to cast a seven point to spell magic and it was only just enough The podium is heavily damaged, crumbling into rubble and dust. If it is to be used, it must be somehow restored to its former state. Alright, well, we can do that. Because there are pieces of it. Alright, we mix them together. We use our magic to restore them. Well, we're not going to use that magic. That's just way too strong. Sure you can, Alex. Alright, these pinnaths look like the ones Pius had encountered in the Forbidden City, where he found the essence of the Ancients. Well, we're going to put our essence of the Ancients on here. I don't think it really matters what order you put them on here. The essence of these ancients is not only going to power this up, it's going to increase its power so that we can summon our own ancient. Okay, let's get our shield up. And let's restore our magic pool. Okay, we'll restore it in a minute. Uh oh, that's a bunch of trappers.
poor Alex here is going to have to go through a lot of the same things her grandfather did. But because her grandfather already went through it and kind of blew away most of the place, the, uh, the challenges are going to change a little bit. For example, the Guardians here are dead. No, the horrors that were here are dead. Instead, there's this big pit. There wasn't a big pit here before. Well, that's because that's a trap. That's a trick. We want to cast Reveal Invisible. Yep, there was actually a floor there. Oh, I thought we had to pull that lever. Alright, we're back out here. Again, make sure your shield is at full power or close to it. Okay, now this time we want to... What do we want to do? We want to summon a creature. So we want the Artak rune. Okay, where are we? I hear Travers. You're hiding over there in the corner, aren't you? Nope. Must have been a trick. Playing tricks on me. Pargon, more power. They're like metabots. Okay, do you remember this area? Where all the monsters were stored? Some of those monsters got away. Well, apparently they want those monsters put back. So we're going to summon a green horror. After a horror has been summoned, press the A button to attack enemies. Attacks can be targeted using the R trigger. Attack an enemy's head from far away to perform a shock attack. Press start to release control of the horror. Horrors can open doors, but not pick up items. And 
All right, we replaced your dumb, stupid horror. Now they want a Chachurka zombie and an Uliath trapper. What do you mean creatures cannot be summoned at this location? You guys are jerks. Alright, get over there. Yeah, just shamble meekly. Just one more. Our magical pool is has been cancelled. That's right, we should have enough magic to summon it. No, no, of course not. How foolish of me. your home. Okay, the barrier is down. for another heaping helping of Pargon. Before I go in there, though... Now let's go. Alright. Do you remember this room? I remember this room. This is where Grandpa was attacked by the worm. Now, what we want... Oop. Gently. We want to get off of this purple area. As gently as possible. Because if we run too fast, that happens. Wonderful. So this happened. I was hoping it wouldn't. But it happened. We're now trapped in this shadow sepia world with literally no way out. I mean, none. The only thing we can do is reload. Okay, so after trying to do this for about, I don't know, five times, I suddenly realized that I forgot. If I hold down the X button, I'll sneak. And if you sneak like this, you won't get the worm's attention. If you walk without rhythm, you won't attract the worm. You can tell by the sound of my voice. Check out my new weapon, a weapon of choice. So to avoid that problem happening again, we're gonna save. And because at this point, the story is all about Alex, she's the only one left. She's the only one we see in that save thumbnail. Alright, so who are we going to summon to come and fight Zelethal? 
Well, we're going to summon Chaturga. Now there's one up here too. Now we shouldn't have to pull any levers. But I'll just look around, keep our eyes open for any trappers, because I can hear them. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to let the next trapper grab us. I can hear it. Now, I let this one grab us because I want to show something off. Those of you being observant can probably already see it. Yep, that obelisk is here. A strange obelisk made from dark granite-like materials. Rune covers, runes cover its front surface, implying a mystical origin. And the body of the dead soldier. A young man's body lies hunched against the wall of the platform. Blood from vicious wounds surrounding his face and neck soak the remnants of what appears to be a uniform with sickly dark red. So yeah, the stuff we captured with the trapper has ended up here as well. See a little trapper. Oh, a bunch of little creepers. Well, trappers, but now they're... they're invisible. But thankfully, we know how to handle invisible creatures. And there is a bunch of them. What's the matter, Alex? Can't hit him? Be out of here in no time.
we've only got a few more runes. Okay, more Pargon. It's like salt. Pargon goes with everything. Ah, okay. So this area has these three obelisks, and we have to destroy them all, or otherwise we can't get through the barrier. We could take our time and destroy each obelisk individually by casting Magical Attack, or we can cast Magical Attack with the Mantarok Rune. Ah, uh, thanks again, Mantarok. This is another one of those points where we have to protect, protect, we have to pick the per- <laughs> I can't speak anymore, can I? We have to pick the right rune. Not dispel, not absorb, summon. So we gotta bust down that barrier. We just need to cast a level 7 Dispel Magic. Yeah, somebody in the chat said, wow, I remember this game. All the memories coming back. Yeah, I have a lot of good memories of this game too. It's honestly one of my, it's probably my favorite GameCube game, and it's one of the better horror-themed games I can think of. Nope, not enough magic. Alright, our final rune. This is going to be a Pargon. Let's see if we did this right.
right. The summoning as well. I wouldn't say complete, but it's prepared. Okay, these three green guardians have their own barrier up, and like the two that we saw in Michael's chapter, we have to take control of one. Two that are not controlled are going to double team that poor sucker. So he's not going to make it. But is that enough to bring down the barrier? Don't look like it. Let's do it again. are dead, and the one we have control over is still alive. So that saves us the trouble of having to fight past one of them. Okay, run! Don't worry about the trappers. Those trappers are not able to bother us. enough to make it? I don't think so. Alright, so, spoilers ahead. If we try to walk in here, it's gonna say, do you wanna save? And yeah, we do. The reason for that is, well, spoilers, when we go on that platform and get teleported away, it's time for a very important battle. So, get your spells prepared beforehand. Now, in the middle of a fight, casting a 7 or even a 5 tier spell is absurd. So we're going to use three uh, three tier spells. So three tier magic pool. No, I don't want to cast it. I want to assign it. Recover is already fine. Uh, shield. We're going to need to set. Where is it? There we go. Uh, we don't need reveal invisible anymore. At least I don't think so. And we've got a permanently enchanted Gladius. That's what we're going to use. So, you know what? I'm going to save again. So that way we don't have to reselect those spells if something goes wrong. Ravis, you're just in time. The summoning spell I began 2,000 years ago is finally complete. You will now have the honor of becoming the first morsel for my Lady Zelatov. An appetizer for the banquet your race shall provide. You forget what it means to be human, Pious. The human race will never go quietly into the darkness. For as long as you have spent summoning your lord, people have struggled against you. Now, thanks to their efforts, I have three of the Ancients' essences. Now, Pious, this is the end! 
<laughs> the end indeed. There, well, she is Zelatov. But we were prepared to. And here comes Chaturga. Okay, boss fight time. It's us against Pius. Now, while P Pius is the obvious enemy, he's not really who we want to deal with. What we want to do is find the artifact and attack that. And he just dispelled our magic. Oh, the artifact is invisible. I'm wrong. Also want to have our sword equipped. We also want to be very careful with Pius, because he can hurt us really bad. It's not invisible. What am I doing? We have to hit Pius first. That reveals. And now we go and attack the artifact. Ooh, did you see that? We had a vision. We had a vision of where the to uh, Tome of Darkness was. Come on, you. You horrible lich. His staff that he has there is really badass. It's like two human uh, uh, spines uh, fused together, wrapped together, with the uh, rib cage on one end and the hip bone on the other. So what's this? The ghost of Elia just came out of her statue, and back over here is a ghostly vision of the Tome of Eternal Darkness. Yep, her spirit has quite literally joined us. And she's gonna help us defeat Pius. And don't let him hit you. When you take the spirit, the form of one of the spirits, if he hits you, you turn back into Alex. It's not a big deal if that happens. But that does mean you're going to have to hit Pius again to summon the spirit once more. Alright, and now we are the form of Anthony. Oh, see, he hit us. And we got uh, transformed back. Getting too aggressive right now. Did 
Did you really hit me on the backswing? Now we are Kareem. Come on, you. Running circles around the lich. Ooh, and what's going on, meanwhile? Yeah, the madness of Zelioth does not stand up to the might of Chaturga. Alright, that should help a little bit. You jerk. All right, run, Max, run! Getcha. Ha ha! We've destroyed your artifact. with your tricks. Oh, alright. Now it's just us against Pius. to him. He's starting to slow down, too. And 
Careful, he can still hit you. Yep, Tachurga's still out there. And humanity is not going to have it good what? under him. But did you notice that Grandpa... Well, yeah, Grandpa wasn't part of the fight, was he? Grandpa has something else he has to do. Alex, we must find this creature. It cannot be allowed to remain in this universe. Alright, so instead of summon, we have to cast the bind spell and for that we need what protect ah, yeah that's yep that's right chaturga you don't get to stay here It is finally over, my dear. The Ancients' plans are finished. For now, at least, you have proved to be an incredibly courageous young woman. Your mother and father would have been proud of you, just as I am. I'm sorry it had to be like this. It's not quite the inheritance I had in mind for you, but there was so little time and so much to do. Goodbye, Alex. I will miss you. Where emptiness had been, new knowledge now seeped inside. Something happened then. I realized that I was not the only one. That there were many others like me. In other places. Other universes. Fighting the same fight, all to serve the needs of the great ancient, and to have my world spared from eternal darkness.
What have I done? Quickly, Alex! We must find this creature! It cannot be allowed to remain in this universe! What have I done? Quickly, Alex! We must find this creature! It cannot be allowed to remain in this universe! It is finally over, my dear. The Ancients' plans are finished. For now, at least, you have proved to be an incredibly courageous young woman. Your mother and father would have been proud of you, just as I am. I'm sorry it had to be like this. It's not quite the inheritance I had in mind for you. But there was so little time, and so much to do. Goodbye, Alex. I will miss you. As I gazed up at the ancient I had brought into this world to stop Pius, my mistake was made clear. This ancient could lay the world to ruin just as easily as Pius's would have. And yet, as quickly as it began, it ended. To think that once I could not see beyond the veil of reality. To see those who dwell behind. I was once a fool.
All right, now it's time for a special cutscene. Of the three ancients, there is nothing. The mighty Chaturga has obliterated the insanity of Zelotarth. The madness of Zelotarth has overcome the power of Ulyalth. The boundless Ulyalth has decimated the power of Chaturga. All at once, separate and simultaneous. For the universe is made of many time streams, many possibilities, all in harmonious synchronicity. Only Mantarok remains, slowly dying. Mantarok, keeper, overseer, warden of ancients, chaos, an entity trap between the veils of reality and the enchanted stakes that impale its flesh. Unable to rally its guardians, it could rely only on its subtle manipulations of the Roivas family to destroy its enemies. Knowing the nature of the ancients, it used its pawns to play them against each other, resulting in their mutual annihilation. Now it will languish forever, festering in its tomb, plotting. You've overcome the darkness that has prevailed for over two millennia. This accomplishment will begin a new era for humanity. Now, would you like to record this grand occasion in the pages of his of human history? Yeah, we would. In memory of Ben Deck, Dilak, nineteen twenty to two thousand. All right, there you have it, everybody. That was Eternal Darkness: Sanity's Requiem. Um, probably one of my favorite games for the Nintendo GameCube, if not my favorite, and one of the better horror games ever made. Um, if you're having any confusion about that ending, it's simply saying that in three different universes, in three different timelines, the Roivas family each worked together to defeat a different ancient, and the ancients, even though they were defeated in three different realities, existed in all of them at the same time. As a result, they all destroyed each other. And only Mantarok remained. Mantarok knew that, and subtly manipulated everything to get to this outcome. So that's why during the course of the game, you know, the first time through, we could pick all three artifacts. The second time through, we only pick two. And the third time through, there was only one left. And in each different playthrough, you know, each ancient affected the game, and each ancient was seeing things that it only it could comprehend. It couldn't see beyond the different realities like the same Mantarok did. So when Alex was there talking about other me's fighting the same battles, it was three different Alex Roivises in three different, essentially, universes that each conquered a different ancient. Now, Eternal Darkness, I don't know if it really did all that well. I don't think it sold well, or I don't think it sold poorly either. It got great reviews, and even now, something like 15 years later, it's still very well regarded, and it's a real cult classic. Unfortunately, though, depending on how you look at it, it never got off the Nintendo GameCube. And... As a result, that kind of limited its ability to reach people. Nintendo GameCube, while I think was a good system and had a pretty good library, it wasn't it wasn't a real successful popular system compared to some of other Nintendo systems. And as a result, the game probably didn't get as much exposure as it deserved. And if you want to go out and play Eternal Darkness, which I highly suggest you do, this game is fantastic. You're going to need to get a GameCube, and you're going to get the GameCube version of the game. 
Unfortunately, we never got a sequel or any other games like this for a couple of reasons. As I understand, Silicon Knights did eventually go out of business and Nintendo kept the trademark, not just for the game, but as I was explained to by my friend Retro Queen Gamer, somehow Nintendo has the rights to the sanity effect system. So if you try to create a game with a similar system, you could get into legal trouble with Nintendo. I know, freaking stupid. Um, there was a Kickstarter a few years back, I think for a game called Shadows of the Eternals, which was going to be a, another game kind of in this vein, in this spirit, by some of the same people behind this one. Unfortunately, that never went anywhere, to the best of my knowledge. Now, we're going to just kind of sit here and let the credits run. We're almost done anyways, because I want to show you the things that unlock now that we've beaten the game all three times. Well, one of the things we now have is jump to game, but we actually got that the second time through. If we select jump to game, we can pick any chapter we like. So for example, if I wanted to go back and play Kareem's, we could. We can also pick which alignment we play through that chapter with. And we also have the, op the option to use eternal mode. Eternal mode is essentially God mode. We have unlimited health, unlimited magic, unlimited sanity. Great stuff. Now, while I love being able to unlock these things and use them in the game, I think this game could have benefited from a couple of other New Game Plus ideas. I think a no-brainer would have been the ability to use different characters in different chapters. Each character not only has their own stats, like health, sanity, and magic, they also have their own stamina, for example, and their own sets of equipment. So wouldn't it have been fun to be playing Kareem, running around in Maximilian's, uh, yeah, Maximilian's chapter, or maybe play Ilya, running around in the very final chapter that Alex was doing? You know, little things that I think would have helped out the game. Not well, it doesn't really help out the game, but you know, fun stuff. Fun stuff to add to it at the very end. Now, that is going to do it. That was Eternal Darkness. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I will see you all in the next game. Take care.